Hello everyone and thanks for taking the time to tune into my third video. Um, today we'll be looking at the golden era of Peruvian football through the perspective of the soccer card slash sticker collecting hobby. <clears throat> we'll be, at, we'll be um, learning about the history behind the golden era of Peruvian football and we'll also look at some cards or stickers that can be found for the players that made this era of Peruvian football possible. Uh, Peru isn't really a country that is often covered but it does have a rich footballing history. Uh, the most commonly known player, of course, is Teofilo Cubillas, but there are a whole generation of Peruvian players that led Peru to their most successful period from 1970 to 1982. Um, the 1960s served as a formative year for many, er, sorry, as formative years for many of these players, and then in the 1970s they would go on to achieve incredible things in the Peruvian football and international landscape. So the first thing we'll be looking at in this video is the beginnings of the golden era, so the 1960s as a whole. Um, this era of Peruvian football was dominated by the three giants of Peruvian football, which are Sporting Cristal, Alianza Lima, and Universitario. Um, from these three teams, the majority of the players that formed the national team would be selected. Uh, the late 1950s and 1960s saw a transformation in Peruvian football that saw the establishment of a set nationwide first division. Prior to this change, the only teams that participated were really from Lima. Uh, the development of a nationwide first division saw a growth in the sport across the country and with it an overall increase in quality. There were definitely regional tournaments from outside of Lima, but it was Lima itself that was the main hub of football at that time. Uh, regarding the national team, the 1960s would become a time of rebirth for Peru since its first golden era of the 1930s. Since then, Peru had not won any trophies nor had they qualified for a World Cup. In the 1950s, Peru had an exceptional squad, but they were unable to compete with the Giants in Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay during this era. In 1958, Peru marginally missed out on the World Cup by losing in a two-leg qualifier against the eventual champions, Brazil. The growth and development of football in the 1960s would culminate in Peru forming an exceptional team that would go on to qualify for the World Cup in 1970 which can be seen as the start of the golden era of Peruvian football. The squad that would lead Peru to the World Cup was a combination of youngsters and established players. This was most evident in Peru's attack that combined experience with youth, um, the experienced player in this case being Pedro León, and the youth being Teofilo Cubillas as a teenager. And looking at the actual golden era itself, it's important to start with the 1970 World Cup. Uh, the 1970 World Cup qualification was an arduous process that saw Peru have to confirm qualification against Argentina in a do-or-die match against Argentina at the Bombonera, which is River Plate or not River Plate, sorry, which is Boca Junior Stadium. Uh, Peru only needed a draw to qualify and would achieve said result with a 1-1 draw, which to this day is considered one of Argentina's darkest moments in their footballing history. At the World Cup itself, Peru were not really expected to achieve much, um, but they would go on to surprise many people with their technical style of play. Peru qualified for the knockouts, finishing second in their group behind West Germany. Teofilo Cubillas was absolutely electric in the group stage, uh, scoring four goals from the attacking midfielder role. Finishing second in the group saw Peru line up against arguably the best national team ever assembled, the Brazil of 1970. Uh, Peru put up an excellent fight against the eventual champions, but would unfortunately be eliminated in a 4-2 loss that saw Kubias score his fifth goal in the tournament, and eventually Kubias would also go on to win the young player of the tournament. Other players from the national team that showed their incredible ability during this World Cup were Pedro León, uh, Hugo Sotil, Roberto Chale, and Héctor Chumpitas. Uh, specifically, it was Héctor Chumpitas that captained this incredible squad. Following the 1970 World Cup, optimism was high for the 1974 World Cup, but unfortunately Peru would fail to qualify. The 1978 World Cup would be the next time Peru would qualify, but between then and the 1970 World Cup, the 1975 Copa America would happen, and this time Peru would go all the way. Uh, following the disappointment of failing to qualify for the 1974 World Cup, uh, Peru prepared itself for the 1975 Copa America. At the tournament, Peru topped their group with Chile and Bolivia, with Cubillas once again leading the front line. In the semifinals, Peru ended up beating Brazil and set up a two-legged final with Colombia. Against Colombia, after both legs, each team had won one game, setting up a do-or-die final playoff match at a neutral venue in Caracas. During this time, Sotil was playing for Barcelona, 
and was unable to play in any of the earlier games of the tournament. Determined to help Peru obtain the Copa America, Sotil left Barcelona's training camp and found his way to Caracas, where he would eventually be slotted into the starting position. Uh, Peru would then go on to win the final, with Hugo Sotil scoring the winner. Um, to this day, this is the last trophy that the Peruvian national team has won. The tournament immortalized Hugo Sotil and elevated players like Juan Carlos Oblitas, Cesar Cueto, and Percy Rojas to the next level. Uh, Teofilo Cubias would also win the player of the tournament due to his immense contributions to the team. Winning the Copa America against some of the strongest squads in the world elevated the status of Peruvian football to immense levels. Fortunately for Peru, they did go on to qualify for the 1978 World Cup, which would go on to be contested in Argentina. The 1978 World Cup was along with the 1970 World Cup, the furthest that Peru would ever make it into the World Cup. In 1970, Peru made the quarterfinals, and in 1978, Peru made the second round, which was the equivalent to the quarterfinals in that tournament. Peru's first group was a quite tough group, um, that had a lot of people expecting Scotland and Netherlands to advance. Uh, Peru would go on top and end up rounding out the group stage with two games won and one drawn, and finished ahead of the eventual finalist Netherlands. The most iconic moment for Peru in the first round was the amazing free kick that Kubias scored, where he would bend the ball into the top corner with the outside of his foot against Scotland. Peru's performances in the first round were so impressive that many journalists began to list them among the favorites to win the tournament. Major sporting magazine El Gráfico named César Cueto as the best player of the tournament in the, in the first round due to his amazing ability to control matches from the midfield. Unfortunately for Peru, the first round would be the best football that they would play. In the second group, or in the second round, Peru would face off against Brazil, Argentina, and Poland. This group would see Peru lose all three games and completely lose all momentum from their first round successes. The most notable moment from this round for Peru was when they lost 6-0 to Argentina in a match that is widely believed to have been fixed, as Argentina needed a, a win by a margin of 4 to advance the final ahead of Brazil. Uh, this match is a stain on the history of Peruvian football, and as impressive as Peru were in the 1978 tournament, it was felt as though Peru greatly underachieved, especially given their first round heroics and their first round excellent performances. Peru would go on to make the 1982 World Cup, but their performance at that World Cup was immensely underwhelming. This golden era uh, of Peru yielded a second international trophy and is an era that Peruvian football fans hold dear to their heart. With the Peruvian national team having the potential to make back-to-back -back World Cups in 2018 and 2022, there are murmurs that we may be living through another golden era, especially after we narrowly lost in the 2019 Copa America final. Only time will tell if this ends up panning out. So now we're going to enter the segment of the video where we look at the legends that made this era of football for Peru possible, along with the cards slash stickers and the hobby that can be collected for each player. The legends that we'll be covering in this video are Teofilo Cubillas, Hector Chumpitas, um, Pedro León, Hugo Sotil, and César Cueto. There are definitely other legends that could be mentioned, such as Juan Carlos Oblitas, Roberto Chale, Percy Rojas, etc. But for the sake of time and simplicity, we will look at the highest echelon of players in my personal opinion at least. In the future, I absolutely plan on making a video dedicated to the longer list of legends from, these, from this era. In the next slides, we will look at the legends and their earliest cards slash stickers that can be found in the hobby that you as collectors may be able to get your hands on if you dig hard enough. The first player that we will be looking at is oftentimes considered the greatest Peruvian footballer of all time and amongst the greatest South American players of all time. Uh, Teofilo Cubillas is an Alianza Lima legend who debuted with the team at the age of 16 in 1966, and that exact same season would go on to be the top scorer for the Peruvian first division, and becoming the youngest player to ever achieve that. This would quickly elevate him to superstardom amongst Peruvian fans, and in 1968, Cubillas would debut for the national team. Cubillas and his achievements throughout his history would go on to earn him a top 50 spot of all-time players from the, IF, I, sorry, the IFFHS. In 1972, Cubillas would earn a South American Player of the Year award, and throughout the 1970s, Cubillas was regarded as one of the absolute best attacking midfielders in the world, just behind the mythical Johan Cruyff. Cubillas gained worldwide recognitions for his performances at the 1970 and 1978 World Cup, where he would win the bronze boot and young player of the tournament in 1970 and be selected in the team of the tournament in 1978. 
Continuing with the theme of the World Cup, Kubias is the highest scoring midfielder in the history of the competition with 10 goals. Overall, Kubias is the seventh highest scoring midfielder in the history of the game, which is something that is commonly underlooked by the hobby and fans in general. To the right of the screen is Kubias's rookie from the 1960, or sorry, 1969 Importadores Peruanos set. This sticker in particular is one of my favorite all time. It features Kubias in the iconic Alianza Lima jersey, and overall this set is very difficult to find and quite rare. At the time of this, this video was made, this is the only 1969 graded Kubias item. In this sticker, Kubias is 19 years old, and after lots of research, I am confident this is the earliest Kubias ever made, as before 1969, the only other albums I could find were from 1966. I'm going to be in Peru this summer, and we'll definitely be looking for more stickers or any sort of collectibles from this era, just to add to my collection, and if possible, I absolutely would love to have an unstuck copy of this sticker. On this slide, we can also see some of the other early card slash stickers for Kubias. Um, the 1969 album Luxor, the one on the right here, is another known rookie option for Kubias. I've seen this album listed on eBay, but unfortunately just wasn't able to get it from the seller. I think it was just a really old listing that was added on. Um, this is an album that I definitely aim to find and to document further. Um, the portrait shot that is used for Kubias makes the sticker very beautiful. And I'm personally a massive fan of cards or stickers that come from players' um, home country and depict the player in their club kit. The 1970 options um, that were considered rookies before the discovery of the 1969 Peruvian items um, can be seen to the left here. Uh, the 1970 stuff can still be considered rookie material as it depicts Kubias at his first World Cup. The one on the farthest left is the Kubias sticker from the iconic 1970 Panini World Cup set which I personally am a very big fan of the design of the sticker, and it's just an iconic set overall. In the middle is another sticker that can be found for Kubias, which is from the 1970 Semic or 1970 FKS World Cup albums. The reason why I have the two different uh, names or albums listed is because both use the same photography and the stickers frankly look the same. Um, these ones, in my opinion, aren't as appealing to me as a collector, when compared to the 1970 Panini World Cup stickers, but these stickers do provide a great and more affordable alternative to collecting Kubias. So now moving on from Peru's greatest midfielder, we're going to look at Peru's greatest ever defender and one of CONMEBOL's greatest ever defenders, period, um, Hector Chumpitas. So Chumpitas was a natural-born leader with an incredible defensive ability. Uh, during the golden era of Peruvian football, it was Chumpitas that was the leader and captain of the national team. He was known for his excellent composure, speed, and ability to distribute the ball from the back line. Chumpitas is a legend that is often overlooked, not only in the hobby, but in world football as a whole, uh, mainly due to the fact that he was a defender, and also the fact due to the fact that Peruvian legends don't seem to get much recognition. Uh, Chumpitas was in fact such a great defender that he has been classified as one of the four greatest defenders in the history of South America alongside Elias Figueroa, Daniel Pasarela, and Jose Nasazzi. This is an incredible group to be included in and it definitely shows the class and quality that Chumpitas had. For Universitario, he made his debut in 1966 after joining from, at the time, second division side Deportivo Municipal. With Universitario, Chumpitas would become a five-time Peruvian champion and would lead Universitario to its furthest run in the, in the Copa Libertadores, which was the final in 1972. In total, including his years at Sporting Cristal in the late 70s and early 80s, Chumpitas became Peruvian champion an incredible eight times. His leadership was essential for any winning side, and Chumpitas is a proven winner wherever he went. For the national team, Chumpitas is an idol to this day. He was the longest serving captain of the national team in his history, being the captain for 15 years, and it was under his leadership that Peru reached unprecedented heights, and once he retired from the national team in 1981, after having led Peru to the World Cup qualification for 1982, Peru would not go on to attend another World Cup for 36 years. During the captaincy of Chumpitas, Peru qualified for three World Cups, two of which Peru became quarterfinalists, and he also won the 1975 Copa America. It is hard to believe that there will be another captain or defender from Peru that will come close to Chumpitas. So now looking at cards and stickers for Chumpitas, uh, to the right is his true rookie from the 1966 uh, Cracks del Fútbol Mundial album. 
that was produced and distributed in Peru. Uh, the sticker depicts Chumpitas at Universitario shortly after he signed from Deportivo Municipal. The sticker is from the first year that he was in the first division, so it's safe to say that this is his rookie item. Uh, the sticker is one that I currently have on my collection, and when prices for grading go down, I definitely plan on sending it into PSA to add to my um, Hall of Fame collection. Once again, on these slides, we can, or on this slide, sorry, we can see other items that can be obtained for Chumpitas. So on the left, we have the 1969 Importadores Peruanos um, from the album Idolos del Fútbol Peruano. Um, in this album, there's actually two stickers for Chumpitas, one depicting him in the national team, which I've gotten graded by PSA. And there's another one which is uh, about the same size and shape as a tall boy that depicts him in the full Universitario kit for the 1969 season. I'm fortunate enough to have both in my collection. My favorite one of the two definitely has to be the one with Chumpitas in the Peruvian kit, just simply due to the fact that it's a stunning portrait shot um, with, of him in the iconic Peruvian jersey. And another reason why I prefer the national team sticker is because of its size. Uh, the sticker can fit into a top loader and into a slab easily. Meanwhile, the Universitario sticker is over, oversized and storage can be quite difficult. Moving beyond 1969, we can find the 1970 Panini World Cup sticker for Chumpitas, which features a portrait shot of him in the Peru kit similar to the one in 1969. I can understand as to why some collectors would prefer his 1970 sticker um, to the 1969 sticker due to the 1970 Panini World Cup sticker set being very iconic. Um, I personally have this card in my collection as well, and it's absolutely stunning and fantastic to just stare at. Um, personally, of the three on the screen, I would have to stick to the 1969 um, Importadores Peruanos um, that has Chumpitas in the national team. But regardless, once again, these are all beautiful artifacts, and I'm super thankful to have them in my collection. And now the next player we'll be looking at um, is the earliest player of them all. So Pedro Perico León was an exceptional player that to this day is considered by many to be the greatest all-out striker that Peru has ever produced. Um, Pedro León spent the majority of his career at Audiencia Lima, establishing himself amongst the greatest idols of the club. Um, Pedro León debuted for Audiencia Lima in 1960, and throughout his career he would go on to win the Peruvian Golden Boot twice and the Peruvian Championship on three occasions. In 1969, Pedro León was voted as the second best player in South America. Pedro León was the talisman for a new generation of Peruvian forwards that were being developed at Alianza Lima. When Cubillas debuted in 1966, it was Pedro León who had played along, or who was playing alongside him and whom taught him a lot about goal scoring and attacking. For the national team, Pedro León was the undisputed starting striker from 1963 to 1972, where he would have 49 appearances and 15 goals. Uh, during the 1970 World Cup qualifiers, Pedro León was instrumental in guiding the team to qualification with his goals and playmaking. León participated in the 1970 World Cup and played in every game. He did not score, but had two assists in the tournament. Rather than being an all-out goal scorer at the World Cup, Pedro León would assume the role of a playmaker and would do a lot of uh, laying, up, laying off of the ball to Cubillas, who would make incredible dribbles through defenders to score goals. As a, pair, as a player, Pedro León was best known for his incredible strength and speed, which allowed him to bully defenses. Pedro León's game was well-rounded, and he was also excellent at tracking back and dropping deep to progress play with midfielders. Looking at Pedro León from the hobby's perspective, the sticker that has been seen, or sorry, the sticker that can be seen on the right is the earliest known sticker of his from 1966. Um, this is the same set that also contains the rookie for Héctor Chumpitas. I have this sticker in my collection, and it is quite beautiful. Um, there's another 1966 issue that I will discuss in the next slide that I unfortunately do not have in my hands quite yet, but it is on its way in the mail. Um, the 1966 Ramirez and Espinar sticker is amongst my favorite um, period, simply due to the like the beauty of the portrait shots, and in this case, having Pedro León in the Alianza Lima kit is a total gem. And on this slide, we can see the other options for Pedro León. So as I said, the other 1966 issue that I don't quite have yet is the Editorial Almex. The Editorial Almex Deportistas Peruanos is one of the best sets out there, uh, just in terms of the photo quality. This is a bit of a grainy and uh, bad image overall, but 
when you actually hold the sticker in hand, the image is just beautiful and it pops out and with the yellow border it just looks fantastic. Um, once I receive the sticker, I'll definitely make a scan of it and I'll be sharing it on the Discord and I'll also be uploading it to the website. Um, this one by far has to be my favorite aesthetically in terms of Pedro Leon stickers, um, just due to the image quality and just the overall design. Um, there are also two other Pedro Leones that can be found in the 1969 Importadores Peruanos set. Uh, this one features, this one is also the set that features a rookie for Cubillas. Um, so in this set, Pedro Leon has two stickers. He has the tall boy that has a full body image of him in the Alianza Lima kit, and he also has the standard portrait shot and smaller sticker of him in the Peruvian national team in the lead up to the 1970 World Cup. The next player we'll be looking at now is Hugo Sotil. So Hugo Sotil is widely considered the second greatest player of this era, just behind Teofilo Cubillas. Although lots of Peruvians that grew up in that era and watched both play, claim that Sotil was a better player. Hugo Sotil was a very versatile uh, player who could be a goal scorer up front or could play on the wing or be a midfield playmaker. Hugo Sotil started his career in the second division of Peruvian football with Deportivo Municipal in the year of 1968. Uh, he quickly caught the eyes of the Peruvian public as he led Municipal to the first division, and in 1969, in the Primera División, Sotil would dazzle fans with his incredible dribbling and technique. Sotil stayed at Municipal until 1973, when Barcelona would sign him for their club. Initially, Barcelona scouts had attended the match to watch Teofilo Cubillas at Alianza Lima, but after being so amazed by Sotil's ability, they decided to sign him instead. At Barcelona, Sotil would join forces with Johan Cruyff and win La Liga, ending a 14-year drought for the Catalan club. After an excellent first season, things would go downhill and Sotil would eventually return to Alianza Lima in 1977-1978. to 1978. Uh, In these two years, he would win his two Peruvian championships, and his legacy in the Peruvian game is still very strong and will continue to be so for years or decades to come. Uh, for the national team, Hugo Sotil participated in two World Cups, both of which Peru made it to the quarterfinals. Sotil would play the role of a playmaker for the national team, allowing, player, allowing for players like Kubias to attack the position, or sorry, to attack the opposition net at will. Hugo Sotil is also greatly remembered for the 1975 Copa America win that saw Peru beat Colombia 1-0 in the final. For the whole tournament, Sotil had been unable to play, and he eventually decided to sneak out of the uh, Barcelona camp and make his way for the final where it would be the only game he'd play in the whole tournament, but he also was the one that scored the decisive winning goal. Uh, this commitment to the national team has made Sotil immortal amongst Peruvian fans and immortal in the history of the Peruvian national team. So looking at the cards and stickers available for Hugo Sotil, uh, the rookie of his is from the 1969 Importadores Peruanos uh, set. There is one of Sotil with the national team and one of Sotil in the Deportivo Municipal kit. The one on the screen here is the one of him in the Municipal kit, which is very similar to the Peruvian one, as both have the red sash. On the next slide, we'll be looking at some of the other cards that are out there for him. So referring back to the um, 1969 Importadores Peruanos, on the left side of the screen here, we can find or we can see the one of Hugo Sotil with the Peruvian national team. Uh, there is also another 1969 set that features Hugo Sotil, but unfortunately I don't have an image of this sticker, but the other set is the 1969 album Luxor. Despite having participated in the 1970 World Cup, there are no Hugo Sotil 1970 Panini World Cup stickers as he was not included in the checklist. I found this to, be, I found this to have been quite surprising and have looked everywhere for an Hugo Sotil 1970 World Cup sticker and just haven't been able to find it regardless of set. There are some other stickers that can be found for Hugo Sotil that are from Spain, where he would go on to play for Barcelona. The one on the screen is the Fer Campeonato La Liga from the debut season for Sotil in Barcelona, which was 1973. Compared to the Peruvian sets, these Fer stickers are quite a lot easier to find and are significantly cheaper. And this may be due to Sotil just not being an extremely sought after player from that era of Spanish football. These cars can be found on Todo Colección, and there are other beautifully designed cards from other seasons he spent in Barcelona as well. And the last player that we'll be looking at today is Cesar Cueto. So Cueto is widely considered the greatest playmaker of Peru of all time. 
and was an amazing passer of the ball and controller of tempo. During the 1970s and 80s, Cueto was often amongst the top five South American midfielders in the world. Cueto also had the coolest nickname, which was El Poeta de la Zurda, or in, Sp or in English, the left-footed poet. In terms of his club career, Cueto debuted for Alianza Lima in 1968 and spent most of his career at the club. He won the Peruvian Championship on three occasions, and in a poll given to Alianza Lima fans, he was voted the greatest Alianza Lima player of all time, which was genuinely surprising when I read the result, at least to myself. <clears throat> Later in his career, he would move to Colombia and play a few seasons for Atletico Nacional and América de Cali where he would win two times, um, or sorry, he would win two championships in Colombia. And during this era, Colombian legend Carlos Valderrama said that Cueto was his main inspiration for football. <clears throat> Looking at Cueto's international career, Cueto, pa or Cueto participated in two World Cups, 1978 and 1982, and won the 1975 Copa America being a crucial member of the squad. During the 1978 World Cup, Cesar Cueto was the star of the tournament for Peru, in many cases overshadowing Cubillas. El Gráfico, the Argentinian sports magazine, named him as the best player of the tournament in the first round, where Peru topped a group that contained the eventual finalists, the Netherlands. Personally, Cueto is my favorite Peruvian player of all time. If you watch any of his videos that you can find on YouTube, his quality and flair is amazing to watch, and his passing ability is, is out of this world. Being a midfielder myself when I play, Cueto was a massive inspiration to me. So now discussing Cueto's stickers and cards. Uh, on this slide, I have Cueto's true rookie from the 1969 Importadores Peruanos. Uh, this sticker has him at the age of 17 when he was just breaking into the Alianza Lima squad. This card is my, or this card slash sticker, sorry, is my favorite one in my collection. I love the portrait and everything about it, regardless of its value. On the next slides, we will look at some of the other stickers that can be found for Cesar Cueto. So on this slide, I have images of some of the other stickers that can be found. There are some stickers that I'm aware of um, that are earlier than 1977, but unfortunately, I do not have scans or images of those stickers. Um, while I'm in Peru in the next few months, I definitely plan on tracking down more of these albums for the collection. Uh, the sticker on the far left is a very beautiful sticker from the 1977 season that features a portrait from his championship winning season at Alianza Lima. Uh, the publisher of this album, Navarrete, began making albums for the Peruvian League in the 1970s and to this day is one of the most iconic manufacturers of Peruvian albums. Um, with Cueto having an amazing 1978 World Cup, I absolutely expect to be able to find an Argentina 78 sticker um, from Panini but he just wasn't included in the checklist, which was another huge shock to me. Uh, in the middle is a sticker from Colombia from the 1981 Estrellas de Fútbol album. Uh, this one has Cueto when he was at Atletico Nacional, sorry, in the 1981 season. Uh, this was also the season where Cueto would become champion. The only Panini World Cup sticker that is available for Cesar Cueto is the 1982 Panini World Cup sticker where Peru would have a very, very disappointing showing. If so that concludes the video for today. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please support the channel by liking and subscribing as it will help others uh, discover this channel and its resources. If you want more information on the sets discussed in this video, you can check the description. I've added links. Um, you can also check out other vintage sets and other vintage checklists and scans by going to my website at classicsoccercards.com. Uh, uh, if possible, you can support me on Patreon to help maintain the website and resources. Um, once again, thank you for tuning in, and make sure to check in for future videos. Thank you, guys.